first of all, I just want to give out my thoughts and prayers towards the people who were there at the stadium. I did see like somebody potentially having a health issue or maybe I believe someone fell down from like the top level of the stadium. I have no idea what went on because there has been like a lot of information about someone having a health issue or someone getting injured within the stadium. I have no idea. Everything is very unclear right now. It has also been said that there has been another person that fainted and just a bunch of things. Everything is very like fresh right now. I'm just going to be recording the video now because I do believe that by this time the game is probably suspended. It's not going to move forward from here. Maybe they come back and play like an extra five to eight minutes. It really doesn't matter because I just think that, you know, the, the tensions are down. The motivation to play is over. I think that the first thing that everybody should be worrying about and taking care, it is going to be the people within the stadiums, the fans of Cadiz. So I hope that they are doing okay. Hope for the best when it comes to themselves and also the people around them, the people who have to experience things like that. So again, let's hope and pray that everything does go well in the end. And so we go into this game and I do want to talk about the first half and I'm also going to be talking about the second half and then just give my overall review of this game. Again, there's not going to be actually really a conclusion when it comes to this game because of how it all ended. So it's going to be a very different video, but let's talk about some details when it comes to this game. And we are going to be talking about the starting 11. In the starting 11, we saw a very different 11. I would say the third team under Xavi Hernandez, the third preferred lineup that Xavi Hernandez wanted to use. I don't think that this was the second best team that Xavi Hernandez has assembled. It is the third, the third wave of players. So you can obviously see that, yes, there has been a lot of changes. We were expecting the best coming from these players, but we go into the first half and when we talk about these players playing together and for most of these players for the first time, the rhythm and the precision was just not there. We did not see the Barcelona that we saw a couple of days ago. And I do believe that this is probably one of the problems that Xavi Hernandez is going to be facing because again, I say this is the third squad because the second wave, the second squad that I would say does consist of players like Jordi Alba, maybe players like Ferran Torres with Lewandowski and Rafinha, and then having the midfield being Kessi and Frankie De Jong and Busquets. This right here, this squad that we saw was just pure, pure testing material. We saw Bellerin, we saw Alonso, we saw Ferran Torres and Memphis Depay playing together. We saw a midfield of Frankie De Jong, Gavi, Busquets, many different players. And again, going back to what I did say, I do believe that one of the biggest problems, it is going to be Xavi Hernandez getting the best from these players, for these players to gel well, because the quality is there. The talent is there. But the question is, could he make these players gel together? Like that duel between Ferran Torres and Memphis Depay was so disconnected. This is probably the reason on why Barcelona did not end up scoring in the first like 40 minutes of the game. And the movements coming from Gerard Piquet was very slow. He did okay, but he was just very slow in his movements. He was not distributing those passes as fast as possible to really punish the opposition. So we did not see a very lethal Barcelona. The goalkeeper of Cadiz was not even tested at all, like at all. And the only two players that were moving Barcelona forward, it was coming through Gavi and Alejandro Bade. Those were the only two players. They had the ability to take the ball away from one of the players of Cadiz and then find the solution right after. It made me confident that yes, we can probably score a goal if Balde and Gavi are heavily involved. And it's great to see that these two players have stepped up and make Barcelona a little better because these are two players that we would say is the future of Barcelona, right? The fact that they responded to Barcelona not playing that well and the fact that they took the mantle, that's good news because this is the future of Barcelona and this is exactly what we do want to see. And so we saw Balde like regaining the ball, dribbling past opponents. He was probably a much more effective winger on that left side compared to like Ferran Torres. Balde had a total of 43 touches while Ferran Torres only had 24 touches. So you can see that Balde was way more involved up and down the pitch. So we dropped like two levels below compared to the Barcelona that we saw a couple of days ago. So again, not really much to draw from this because all of this was pure, pure testing on what many of these players could do together for the first time. And I'm going to be drawing my conclusions here when it comes to the first half. Xavi Hernandez moving forward should always use at the very least two of the starting attackers he regularly does use, not just one, because the only attacker that he regularly just used within the first half, it was only Rafinha. But we have to have at the very least two. Like we have to have Rafinha and either Dembele or Lewandowski, two players that could have made the huge difference in the first 45 minutes. If we see Lewandowski or Dembele much more involved, getting more minutes, playing with Rafinha, the game would have been, again, much, much more different and probably would have scored about one to two goals in the first 40 minutes. The other thing that we probably should conclude coming from this first half is that you cannot come here and tell me that Xavi Hernandez was not thinking about the Bayern Munich game. There's a reason on why we saw so many players playing together for the first 
first time, why we saw Bellerin coming in, why we saw Marcos Alonso coming in, why Lewandowski and all of these players coming in later down the match and only play about 30 minutes. Xavi Hernandez was really thinking about that game. Like he built this starting 11 based on who can be rested for the game against Bayern Munich because all of his key men was not there like at all. We did not see Kunde, who was very important to him. We did not see Eric Garcia. We did not see Pedri until the second half. We did not see Lewandowski until the second half. We did not see Dembele until the second half. And so you can just see that Xavi Hernandez really wanted to rest his A players and be ready for the game against Bayern Munich. And I'm very surprised that Xavi Hernandez has made a decision like this because the whole idea and mostly what coaches like to say is that we need to take it one game at a time and just focus only on this game and not think about what's going to be happening right after. Because if Xavi Hernandez was really focused on winning this game and winning 4-0, 5-0, 6-0, he probably would have placed the best possible starting 11 and then placed players like Memphis, Ferran Torres, Hector Bellerin, Marcos Alonso later down the game. And to be very honest, like I look at Barcelona's situation right now, I know that they want to do a great impression in the Champions League. Like I understand it. Like the only reason why we have done so many great moves in the summer, why we have brought in so many great signings, it is because we want to do well in the Champions League and not just that, but actually win the Champions League. So I do want to win against Bayern as much as Xavi Hernandez does want to win, which is the reason why he has rested so many players and put in like the C to B players. So we go into the second half and we did not see any changes yet. It was quite clear that Xavi Hernandez was going to place these A players and only play about 30 to 35 minutes. And then later down in that second half, we finally did see Barcelona score their first goal with Gavi running down that right flank, making a pass. The goalie blocks it, deflects it, and the ball goes straight to Frankie De Jong and Frankie De Jong does score the first goal for FC Barcelona. This was such a deserved play coming from Gavi, like his hard work had it to be returned with a gift and that is by bringing Barcelona 1-0 up. You felt like this player needed the recognition after what we saw in the first half, him being one of the only lights within the first 45 minutes and so I'm so glad that Gavi has hustled through that play and made Frankie De Jong score and bring more confidence on this man. These two players overall really do deserve it but we were winning 1-0 but it was not the most convincing way to be winning 1-0 and on the 57th minute we did see exactly what Xavier Hernandez wanted to do and what we felt like should have happened and that is by placing Lewandowski, Pedri and Dembele on the pitch and taking away Gavi, Memphis and Ferran Torres. Memphis and Ferran Torres these two players did almost nothing when they were on the field yes they saw opportunities but they did not really build any sort of momentum or chemistry on that left side so these changes they were needed because we wanted to win and win with confidence win with dignity and nine minutes later of course we saw Lewandowski score like what else are you going to be seeing Lewandowski scores the goal and made it 2-0 and let me tell you the reason why I love this goal so much is because of what I did see in the first half that really did annoy me and let me explain what I do mean by this in that first half one of the things that really did annoy me was Ferran Torres not wanting to score and having that hunger to really put himself in the box and positions to put the ball in the back of the net like there were many moments where I saw crosses heading towards the box and the only thing Ferran Torres had to do was literally just throw his body stretch his legs and just try to look like you're trying to attempt to put the ball inside the net because there has been many plays where I saw that ball go into the box and Ferran Torres barely even tries to attempt to touch the ball and put the ball in the net he did not even do that he did not even bother doing that he just like oh my god I can't reach it let me just like relax and just hope for the next opportunity maybe it'll come in about five to six minutes later but Lewandowski with a completely different type of energy he literally just threw his body just to score the goal you can see that he was hungry he came in with a lot of aggression his approach in the box is just world class and that is what separates Lewandowski from all of the other players is the fact that he's like okay it looks like I might not reach it but I'm going to attempt it I'm gonna throw my body I'm gonna stretch my legs and I'm gonna and I'm going to put the ball in the back of the net and of course the hard work has paid off and that is why Lewandowski continues to be one of the top goal scorers within La Liga now I'm going to be ending it here because as soon as all of these things did happen again like that incident did happen on the stadium it kind of threw me off for a bit because again it's just like you know we we always look forward to these games and we never want things like this to happen like to any fan at all in any given moment I do see here currently that Barcelona are actually going to be returning in about five to six minutes and they're going to be finishing the match if there are some updates I'm probably not going to be announcing it here because again I had no idea that the game was going to be returning I thought it was going to be suspended according to many of these articles but now I'm seeing here in front of my face that it is going to be resuming but but whatever does happen I hope the best does happen and especially for that fan. If we win 3-0, great. If we continue to just win 2-0, great. The final score was 2-0 and we move on from here, gain the three points and the full focus
focus now is to move forward to the game against Bayern Munich and we are going to be away. It should be a very exciting time. Let's put on the best performance possible and I am going to be making a pre-match preview for that game and of course I'm also going to be making a post-match review after the match is over and hopefully I can announce and we can announce and talk about Barcelona's great potential win. So that is going to be wrapping up today's Barcelona post-match review. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.